Hey, Bruce, when you when you look at this matchup again after playing them once, is it more important to defend them and keep the score low or to score with them and try to win a shootout? I think if you look at the, the their games at home, uh, Oklahoma uh, was able to keep it close and, and pr pretty much keep a low scoring game. Iowa State, I'm not when I say low scoring, you're, I'm talking the 60s, not the 70s. And, uh, you know, we had the, you know, the special half against them at home. Obviously, uh, you know, Nigel was magical and. Uh, you know, so you got the 50, but then you only got 25 in the second half. And so I, I think if we're going to have a chance, it's probably got to be in the 60s and, and hope we're, we're making shots and taking care of the ball. I, you know, I think the biggest thing is keeping them out of transition. Uh, when they get their transition, easy hoops, plus, you know, they got really talented players. Um uh, you know, when they combine those, you know, now it's, it's really tough to stop and they get on a roll and, and uh, you know, probably you're in, you're in trouble. Is this another game where you think Casey can help you? Well, you know, with McCormick, uh, they've done a, you know, they, I think they're going to a more, uh, you know, he's had, you know, he, he's had some ups and downs during the season, but uh, we thought the last time when we played them, they were starting to really try to go to him and, you know, Coach Lauer uses the term force feed him and, and, you know, to get him some confidence and get him going. Obviously, he offensive rebounds unbelievable. Uh, it's what, 18% or something. He's one of the best in the country of getting re offensive rebounds. Uh, you know, he heard, you know, what he had eight against us last time. So it's it's unbelievable. It, it's, uh, it's beyond what I don't know if I've ever seen anyone get eight in a game. So, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, you're going to have to use those big guys. You're going to have to use all of them, uh, you know, and, and hope we don't have, you know, too much foul trouble. Obviously, the uh, we got Davion fouled out last time and, uh, you know, we put them to the line and we didn't get to the line. So it's, uh, you know, that's a factor also always. And uh, I, I regret not asking this on Saturday, but what was the ref's explanation on the, the Mark Smith technical in Stillwater? Was he just talking a little too much or what, what was the deal? There? I, I'll be honest. I'm frustrated with it. I, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, address it today with, I, I don't understand it to be honest, because he did, you know, he made a emotional response. Uh, I don't think he got in anyone's face. Um, you know, it's, uh, he yells, he yells after all his layups. I mean, he's been doing it all year. You know, do I agree with it? I know, but it's, it's all around the country. I was watching two games last night and I could pick out, you know, six, seven plays in those games where somebody yelled because they show an emotion. They see it on TV. I, I don't know. And when you have a close game like that, obviously it becomes a major factor. And, you know, he just said, I, we can't, we can't have that kind of, uh, that kind of uh, behavior in the game. And I, I, I understand it somewhat, but I, I don't know because, uh, you know, obviously it's a, it's a close game. It's overtime game. Every, every point, every free throw counts. Um, you know, our, you know, we gotta, we gotta show uh, control and be smart, but at the same time, um, you know, they are young men and they're having fun. And, you know, if you're taunting, please give them a tee. I'm, I'm fine with it. You stand over somebody, you clap in their face, you push them, whatever it might be. Uh, you know, those, those, I don't, uh, but if you're yelling with emotion because you scored a layup, I, I don't, I don't know. It's just, obviously we had it in the Baylor game too. And I think it, from what I was told, it caused a lot of that, even national question mark about some of those things. But um you know, we, if they're going to call, if my only thing would be give them a warning, hold your hand up. Hey, bud, I can't take, take this and give them a warning. Now he does it again. Then, you know, now at least it happened. But when you say you're going to address it, <clears throat> do you mean with the conference or what? It, I'm just going to ask the uh, head of officials today. I, I've been thinking about okay. it all weekend, just, uh, you know, because I, I'm wondering about it, to be honest. I, I just, because it, you know, it, it, you know, we all we talked about it as a staff Saturday night. We talked about it yesterday. And, you know, I, I, I usually don't do much with calling in and stuff because I don't know if it does any good other. But this time I'm just I, I just wonder about it because now it's been twice in games. And this time, obviously, it's a close game and it affects us. All right. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks for the, the input there. 
my next question to Grant. Hey, Coach, are you happy with the rebounding as of late? And uh, what do you attribute it to if you are? <laughs> you know, the crazy thing is, what did we get? It was either 16 or 18. I can't remember the offensive rebounds. But they they only had eight, and they got more second-chance points. So, you know, I thought, you know, <laughs> you know, we had had, obviously, early in the year, we missed a lot of layups. We had trouble with layups. Uh, we didn't finish all the time. Um, and, you know, this time, you know, we, we get a bunch of uh, second chance points or second chance opportunities that we just don't finish them. Um, you know, so that, you know, we, we made some strides, uh, we, we gotten better. Obviously we got a, a tough test because they just, that, you know, that was the difference in the game. Obviously they just punked us on the glass last time and points in the paint. Uh, points, free throws, and and the, the second chance points were uh, the the biggest things. They had forty points in the paint and nineteen second chance points. So it's uh, uh, big, big stats. And then uh, you know you, you shot the lights out from three and struggled near the rim. I'm curious what you think about uh, utilizing the mid range game more. I know you you really enjoyed enjoyed that during the 2019 championship season. You know, I'm, I'm a little bit old school and I, I kind of argue with the young assistants even. And, you know, I watch the N, even the NBA. You talk about Chris Paul and Booker and the, the playoffs, Middleton, the, the NBA championships. And I'll like, I'll joke and text our, our group like, oh, another mid-range. Uh, you know, I, I, I like that part of the game. I, I think it's important. I think when you play good defenses, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a valuable tool. Uh, obviously, Chris Paul has made a living off of a, a mid-range for you know one of you know story NBA careers for a, for a point guard. Uh, it's it's amazing, and uh, you know it it would be nice. But sometimes it's the defenses, um, how they play and what they give you, and and they were switching a lot and forcing us to go one on one and 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 make us make plays and. But we did, if you, you know, if you look at the stats, we only shot 31 from, from two point range and 40 something from three point, um, you know, we just didn't finish. Uh, you know, we had, we had a couple of easy ones. The one Mike missed in the transition and Nigel's got an easy put back and Davion actually fouled him. You know, it's just a crazy, you know, circum sometimes things happen that way, I guess, but uh, we do need to finish around the rim when we get those opportunities. I know you need to get there first, but I mean, what do you, with the backcourt that you have, do you feel pretty confident um, if you were to get to the NCAA tournament with, with the backcourt? You know, I, I really think we're one of the, I think we belong in the NCAA tournament. Obviously we've had our, we've lost close games. You know, that's our fault. Uh, some of it, you know, it's, it's been injury. Some of it's been COVID. We've had our issues. Uh, you know, we, I, last week we were the third best uh schedule rating in the country on the on the net um we played a tough schedule um i i think we're a good enough team but we got to get there as you said and uh, i keep telling our guys if we can find a way to get there i really believe we can have success because of the because of we played close games we have good guard play um you know obviously it's matchups all you know that's a big factor but you know i i, I you know, but we got to get there. And that means we got to finish strong, find a way to get some wins here down the stretch. Thank you, coach. I would also add it, it you know, with our league, I, I just, our league is, you know, <clears throat> the net rating, if the net means anything, uh, you know, when they start talking about only five or maybe six teams, it just baffles me because uh, we've had such good success and, and uh, it would be a, it would be a shame if, if we'd only get that many teams in there because of uh, how good our league is. Cause we just beat each other up. I, I just, uh, and we play at everyone round Robin. I look at the big 10 and, you know, I just, I have friends still, and I'm like, I'm talking on the phone this morning with a couple, you know, they don't play everybody twice. They don't, they might not play the best teams. They play them at home, but not the other one. It's just, you know, I, I just, I hope, that uh, our the committee, I hope our league does a good job pushing, whether it's us or some of the other guys. But uh, you know, I I can't believe we would get not get seven teams at least. And a Big Ten coach told me last week. He said, "God, you guys could have all ten. I said, "No, Oklahoma State can't go." So he said, "Well, then you should have all nine. 
Um, so, it, you know, that, but, you know, I, I, you know, we'll see what happens. We're always got to, you know, obviously I'm worried about us and we got to finish strong. Was that Tom Izzo? <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> Thank you, coach. Yeah. Uh, next question to Michael. Yeah, Coach, I wanted to get your take on what transpired in the Michigan-Wisconsin game yesterday or afterwards. Obviously, uh, you know, for our game, it's it's disappointing. Um, you know, it's uh, uh, you know, it's not good. It's not good, and and for anybody, for you know, for Michigan, for Wisconsin, for the coaches, for the for our college game, uh, it's uh, you know, I, I I feel bad for everyone involved uh, and and for our game, and uh, you know, it's. Uh, you know, we have a good game. I, I you know, it, I think it'll show you, it shows you though, uh, the stress the uh, that it is for all us coaches and for the players, for everyone involved. I mean, we put so much time in and we care, the kids, our kids care so much. And, um, you know, you're fighting your, your tails off to, to win, to try to get in the tournament. Um, you know, to compete and that, and the coaches, you put in all that time and, uh, you know, I, it, you, you hope you can control your emotions, but, um, you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard. It's a stressful time of the year for everybody. And, uh, but, it, you know, at the same time, I, I, it's, it's not good, obviously for our college game. Thank you. Yep. Other questions for coach? Coach? Oh, go ahead, Kels. I just want to ask just about playing in, in Allen. Um, I mean, obviously one of the harder places out there. Is there anything you've picked up over the years about, uh, you know, what, what you guys do well to be in the game there versus, versus otherwise? It's funny you ask that because Curtis Kelly, late last night, I was in here uh, in the office and uh, – you know, Curtis was just, he's helping, he's got helping with the scout. And he just asked me, is there something coach the games that you guys have been in there? And, you know, I, I really think you, you have to be able to score the basketball and, and you, it's a, it's a fine line. It, you have to have discipline, but you also have to play fearless. Um, you know, if, if you, if you get, if you start getting tight, and, you know, and let them, they, the crowd gets going, they, they'll get steals, deflections, they'll get transition. They'll get lob dunks, then it gets louder, and now so you you have to be disciplined but fearless. I, I think, and you got to have somebody just you know be able to make plays and score uh, to keep it in the game. I, I think if you can, there's always like a point in the first half and a point in the second half that you got to fight through those two and to give yourself a chance. Obviously, we've been there a few times at the end, and we just never the plays haven't gone our way. We haven't made the shot, whatever it might have happened. So. Um, but you know, I I hope good guard, you guys brought up good Grant brought up good guard play. Uh, I hope that's a factor um, in the game, and and you know we can we can play with good poise and pace and and get good shots, and we have nothing to lose. I mean, you know, just go. But if you can't go with a freeness, uh, you have to. If you still got to have discipline because they're really good, and you have to stay in front of them. Uh, you got to keep them out of transition. You got to take care of the ball. Pick sixes are important. So, all right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. One last, uh, one last call for questions for let coach go. Okay. Coach, thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you.